Now, the UN Security Council has voted to keep peacekeepers in Chad for at least another two months while negotiations are held on the mission's future. The resolution extends the UN mission until May 15th. Now, joining us from the United Nations in New York with more on the mission's future is VOA's Margaret Bashir. Hi, Margaret. Good morning, Demi. Morning, good to see you. Now, it seems as though this news of the extension by the UN Security Council is not really being welcomed by Chad. In fact, uh, President Idris Dibi wants a withdrawal more than an extension. That's right. He has said that he wants them out um, by, by this summer, in fact, by July. But the, uh, the two-month extension is basically meant to give a little time and space so negotiations can continue between the UN Secretariat and uh, President Deby. So we'll see what happens after May 15th, if they can reach a compromise. Because basically, uh, President Deby wants the military and police component of Minercat out of the country, but he's willing to keep the civilians. But the UN says that's, that's not an option, because they won't leave civilians there without a military presence to protect them. How valid is uh, President Deby's point that uh, the M Municat, at least, is not protecting the civilians? For one, it never fully deployed, uh, as was mandated in the beginning. Well, there's some truth to that, but not entirely. They, where they are well deployed, they, they're doing a good job. Uh, they're deterring weapons and camps. There's law and order in some of the refugee and IDP camps. Uh, sexual violence is down in some places where, where they're patrolling. So where they are there, they're effective. But he is right in saying that they haven't fully deployed. They're at about 70 percent of their mandated force. So because th they lack the numbers, uh, they're not able to completely do the job. Now, the, uh, of course, the refugees in question here are in the northeast part of Chad, and they're mostly from Darfur, Chad itself, and also the Central African Republic. From the UN's perspective, what would be the impact of withdrawing in terms of what the refugees then will face with no security? Well, it's a big issue. I mean, there's a, as you say, there's about a half a million people, a half a million refugees in IDPs. It's a significant number. And uh, it's not just on the eastern Chad part of the border. They're also in northeastern Central African Republic. So uh, it would be a major humanitarian problem, because if the uh, Minercat forces leave, then you might have a deterioration in the security situation, in which case many of the NGOs and humanitarian workers would probably roll back their presence or, or withdraw completely even, because if they can't protect their uh, aid workers, they're not going to leave them there. So that would uh, directly impact the half million refugees and IDPs in the area. Do you know whether Mr. Debbie is offering any alternative when he says he doesn't want the Municat there? Is there any alternative that you know Chad is offering? Not at the moment. Their original proposal, like I mentioned earlier, was to keep the civilian component, it's about 1,000 people, and um, release the military. But as I said, the UN won't go for that. So we just have to see the uh, negotiations are ongoing, and we'll see what happens in the next round. The head of peacekeeping was in Chad about two weeks ago. He hasn't been back since. So we'll see what the next uh, round of negotiations brings. Very briefly, Margaret, do you know what would be the likely outcome uh, following the two-month extension? Well, like I said, we'll just have to wait and see where the negotiations go. I, I think it's too early to say. But you have to consider that they can't withdraw overnight. You know, you can't have a peacekeeping force of, of nearly 3,000 uh, police and military and have them disappear on, you know, Tuesday. So it's going to take time to withdraw them, whether President Debbie likes it or not. But there is one thing to consider. They're there at the pleasure of the host country. So if President Debbie really wants them to go, they're going to have to go. But at the same time, the Security Council doesn't like heads of state uh, dictating to them. So <laughs> we'll see how it ends up. Thank you so much, Margaret Bashir.